Dobry den, which is hello in Ukrainian. So today I'm going to be showing you another way to make an amazing meal. Now I'm taking it back to the home roots, my childhood roots. So basically for a lot of people that don't know, I'm actually half Ukrainian. So, and it is on my mum's side. Now from a very little boy, I was the only one that really sat and watched my granddad. Now my great granddad, God, God bless your soul, Ostab, and my grandma Amelia. So today I'm going to show you every single meal that we used to make as kids, yeah? And every meal that we ate. So today well, I shall be making potato cakes, which is pratsky. I shall be making holopche, which is cabbage rolls stuffed with corned beef and rice. I shall be making a borscht, chicken borscht, which is a beetroot soup, which is very, very high in vitamins and very good for you. I've showed you before how to make it, but I'm going to be showing you again today. So I'm making that and I shall be making pierogi. Because it is National Pierogi Day today, which is a potato filled, almost like boiled pastry. So with a gorgeous, with um, potato and cheese filling and a gorgeous sour cream on top with like crispy onions. So first we're going to start off guys, right, so you've got your pans behind you. Right, so your white cabbage is like this, yeah? You'll be wrapping that up soon. So with that, now you want to be boiling that with some hot water, yeah? And I'm also going to pop some water in, well, pop some water into the pan for the potatoes as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the kettle water and I'm going to put that into the pan with the rice and boil the rice ready for the filling for the hollop chick. Because that needs to be cooking for at least an hour, yeah? So we've got the rice here. You want to be using long grain rice. There we go. Pop that in your pan and pop that in with hot water. And get that boiling away nicely. <coughs> There we go. Right, so your rice is on. You want to put that on for about medium, for about 15 to 20 minutes, yeah, till it softens and it also expands, yeah? Simple as that. I should be back in a second. And I'm back. So basically, I've put my cabbage on to boil in hot water. I have put the hot water on ready for the potatoes, for the pierogi. So I am now going to chop up some potatoes, just like you would with mash, because that's what it is, it's mash anyway. So you've got your pre-peeled pre potatoes. So you want to get your all-purpose potatoes, yeah? So you want them perfect, because you want the fluffy mash, yeah? So all you're going to do with these is you're going to chop these up as if you would with in mash, yeah? So that should be enough. Let me get my knife. There we go, guys. So, yes, I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're all well. It is hard still going on, everything that's going on. But we will get through it together, yeah? So, chop your potatoes like so. There is no fancy way of doing it. So I just chop them. The smaller they are, the easier to mash though. I will give you that, yeah? Always remember to put a pinch of salt into your hot water because it helps boil and it also gives them more flavours, guys, yeah? So there we go. Right, so just chop these up like accordingly. Now this is something that I've absolutely always loved from a little kid. Some people not, are, are not forced to like this food. But the one thing that I know that is true to my granddad and my grandma's heart is what I learned is everything that you actually make with this is all made easily and grown. So you've got your wheat for your flour that's made on a farm. Because in Ukraine, obviously my family, we're not we're not poor, do you know what I mean? But a lot of people in Ukraine are very poor, yeah? So everything that's made is either like the milk would be from your animals on the farm, the meat from animals. The wheat from the flour uh, would make flour, eggs, chickens, so everything, it's almost like par food, but to us it's like gold dust, we love it over here, we've grown up with it, so we love it, yeah? But everything, it's a very, very cheap budget thing, yeah? Because it can all be grown at home. So, you've, you've done your potatoes, like so, yep, yeah, you're going to pop them into the hot water now, like so, that's the mash started, pinch of salt into your water, there we go guys, yeah? So that's bubbly nice away, and I should be back in a second. And I'm back. So basically now, what we're going to be doing is pratske. This is so easy. This is almost like a hash brown, but it's the Ukrainian way of doing it, yeah? This is how I do it. So basically all you've got is your pre-potato, pre-peeled potato. You want to grate your potato. Just like so. And I shall be back in a second, because you'll get the gist of this. You just peel all your potatoes into there, boom. And I'm back. So basically, you've grated your potato, yes? What we're going to do with this now is we're going to add some ground pepper, black pepper. Sprinkle, just a touch, yeah? Into the potato. 
a tiny pinch of salt and one egg, yes, one egg. Crack that in, buzz in, yep. And all we're going to add to that now is a tiny dash of flour, which I have picked up proper Ukraine, well it's Polish, but it's for Ukrainian and uh, Polish and Eastern European, which is actually the proper correct flour to use for the pierogi because it's absolutely perfect for the pastry, yeah? So what we're going to do with that is we're going to put some of this in here and it'll, it'll bond the potato together and make this perfect, yeah? And then all I'm going to do is put that to a side and let that all bond together. Ready for frying, shallow frying in a frying pan, yeah? So you're going to mix this together, guys, yeah? Get your little spoon. It doesn't look very nice at the moment, but it is absolutely gorgeous and the smell of it. Now, this is served in our family tradition with tomato ketchup. That's what we all love, yeah? And this is how we do it. Yeah, so it's very, very easy to make. Now, some of my family that are on my Facebook still can't cook this, so this is actually a proper tutorial way of showing you. I am the only one in the family that can actually cook every single thing of it the way my granddad did, yeah? <coughs> Sorry, some of us have learned. Some of us have learned to make it from online. I learned from the best. Yep, not bragging or anything, but yes. So as you can see, that's that. Now you're gonna put this to a side. I'm gonna wash my hands and wash the surfaces, and I shall be back. And I'm back. So a quick, a quick little tip as well with your cabbage when it's boiling in the water, unless it's fully submerged, keep turning it over. Make sure the leaves. And what I've done is I've scarred the bottom of the white cabbage. So that the leaves will come off easily, but obviously it cooks a lot easier as well and a lot better. There you go. Right, so now we're going to move on to the Bosch. First thing what you want to do, get your chicken portions. Yep. Now you can oven bake these. You don't have to use chicken. In our family when we were kids, my granddad used to go, my great granddad, God rest your soul, used to go to a butcher's and get a cheap lamb shank or whatever cheap meat you can find and you boil that. But you boil it overnight. Now I'm going to show you something that's easier. I can cook it for a couple of hours, it's nicer the next day because all the meat and everything, but it is easy to make and you can make it fresh. Right, so here we go. If you want to open the chicken fillets up, these were only £4.79, I'm now shopping at Lidl because I'm close to Lidl. So all you want to do with these is put these in to your lean meat machine or in the oven like I say for 30 to 35 minutes. Lean meat machine is better because you take the fat out of it, yeah? Pop them in and get them cooking. See, I've now saved a little bit of chicken, which can be used for tomorrow for a nice little salad for us both. There you go. Pop that into the fridge. Wash your hands thoroughly. And also the chopping board, because it's been in contact with meat, and you do not want poisoning. I mean, some of the worst things you can get poisoned off is fish, and believe it or not, rice, reheated rice, you can, you can actually kill you, it's very bad for you, yeah? So, Please be aware of that, yeah? It's very, very dangerous. And chicken, obviously, salmonella, not good either. Right, so you wash your hands, all the work top and everything. You started, give that quick little rinse over there. Right, so while your chicken is cooking away nicely, there we go. You're gonna move on to the base of the actual uh, the soup. So basically, all you want with this is Packeted beetroot, about 54p, yeah? People don't realise realize this is like cranberry, it's an antioxidant, yeah? It's very, very, very good for you. So if you if you drink a lot or anything like that, or you, you don't have such a good healthy day, this is absolutely perfect for you, yeah? It's good for your heart, your blood, everything. This is really, really good. And a lot of people don't like beetroot, but it doesn't taste so much like beetroot. So it's as daft as it sounds, the longer you cook it, the nicer it is. And I've picked up two bases for the soup. Now this is like a beetroot stock soup, yeah? So it's a stock for it, that's what I use it as. Picked up two, which will give it absolutely amazing flavour, guys, yeah? Pick this up from any Eastern European shop. You can actually pick it up in some supermarkets as well if you want, at the Eastern European um, aisles as well. So I shall be back in a second. And I'm back. So basically, for the base of your soup, I have literally drained these. Be careful, because it does really badly stain everything, does beetroot, yeah? And it's not very nice. So all you want for this now is the juices are in there. Pop your grater in there. Get your beetroot and grate it like you did your potatoes. And you'll get the process of that. All you do is keep grating so you've got a pile of your beetroot. Yes, I'll be back. 
and I'm back. So basically, you have grated all your beetroot, yeah? And it's all there in the bowl. You're gonna add this now to your big pan. Yeah, just like so. And all I'm gonna do with this now is fill this with some kettle water. So boil your kettle. While you're waiting for that to boil, you want your two sachets, whatever they are. Wherever they are, I cannot find them. I'll have to. Oh, there we go. Right, so these two go into your grated beetroot. Just like so. Pop. Smells absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to show you it anyway. One minute. So this is like ground down beetroot stock, yeah? See that? You can see it. It's like a purple powder, yeah? I pick these up for about 89p per sachet, yeah? Mix that in. Like so. Oh god, I just spilled that down myself, that was clever. Nice little stain for myself. Good to make the white trainers on like. There we go. Right, so you've mixed it in, and that just smells absolutely gorgeous, yeah? And all I'm gonna do with that is gonna put a tiny bit more pepper in for flavour. Like so. About half a teaspoon of pepper, yeah? That little taste. Beautiful, yeah? Really strong. Nice flavours. Now, when you boil this off, people go, oh, beetroot. Do you know what? It is so, so good for you guys. People just don't realise that. It's a misconception. You know, it'll taste really earthy. It'll taste really nasty. Now, when you put your... If you just did it with beetroot, it would taste a bit earthy. Now, with this stock, it takes that away, and the salt and the pepper is absolutely peng. It really is beautiful, guys, yeah? So, I shall be back in a second once I boil the kettle. And I'm going to dice my chicken that I've been cooking, plonk it in, and you'll see in a minute. And I'm back. So basically, recap. You've grated your beetroot, put that into the pan. You've used two of your packeted um, powders, which is beetroot stock. Pop them in. Salt, pepper. Now you're going to add your hot water. You've got to fill this up, because it will reduce down. Just like so. And all I'm going to do to this is I'm going to add my cooked chicken that I've used on the Lean Me machine. You can use in the oven, you can do what you want with it, yeah? You don't have to use chicken. The other thing that I would say, meat wise, do not use mince because it's not for this, yeah? So, you can use chicken, turkey, duck, anything you want, lamb shank, anything that's cheaper for you, whatever. I do not mind, guys, yeah? I'm showing you the base of it, but I always use chicken. I've always used it. I've used beef, I've used pork, I've tried it all. But chicken is a winner winner. So all you do now with this, for that, is you are going to pop that on the hob and leave that for about an hour or two. Bubbling away, yes, on medium. Back in a second. And I'm back. Right, so for your hull up chair, I have pre-boiled, pre as you've seen, some long grain rice. Make sure it's long grain rice. There you go, there it is, yeah? All I'm going to do to this now is I am going to open well, I've already opened it. My corned beef, yeah? I'm going to dice this up into tiny little bits, so I will be back in a second. The full tin, dice it up, and come back. And I'm back, so... Sorry, I'm eating. Terrible. You've chopped your corned beef. Pop that in. With your rice. Like so. I'm going to put a pinch of um, onions in. Just like so. And a touch of garlic. Granules for the flavour, yeah? You can jazz this up, you can put mushrooms in, you can put, you can put whatever, whatever you want in, yeah? All you're going to do with this now is you're going to mix this all together. Like so. You get the gist of it, I'll be back. And I'm back. So basically, it is a bit like corned beef hash, really. You mix that together, you mix it all together, yeah? That's how it should look. I shall be back in a second. I'm literally going to get the cabbage out and get ready to peel off the leaves. Now, what you want to do with that is take the hot water out of the pan, once you've done that, then what you're going to do is you're going to have cold water, cool it down so it makes it a bit easier to peel it, yes? Back in a second. And I'm back. So basically, I'm going to show you next stage. So for your hollow chair, bring this over. Your cabbage. It's very, very simple, this. Very tasty, very simple. Not everybody will like this because not everybody likes Ukrainian food. It's each to their own, yeah? And this is what I'm here to tell you guys. Not everybody likes the same stuff, yeah? 
So, all you're going to do is you're going to peel the cabbage here, yeah, the leaves off, like so. That's how they should look like that, yeah? With your leaves. Right, and what you're going to do with these is, I'm going to show you one second, once I've got this off. Cut round the bottom of the actual cabbage. If you cut round the bottom here, yeah, it actually makes it easy to peel them off and score it well then before you're doing it. And it just peels off like that. Perfect leaf like that, yeah? All you're going to do with that now is you're going to get your mix. This, this, which is recapping, is garlic granules, a pinch of, about a teaspoon, uh, a quarter of an onion, a tin of corned beef, and rice that has been boiled, yeah? With some seasoning. You just put that into the leaf like so. You're going to wrap it just like that, yeah? And you're going to put that in to your Pyrex dish, your oven dish, whatever you tray. And it's the same process. And I'll show you. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to show you one more time. So basically, your cabbage leaf. A nice big spoon of your filling. Wrap the leaf up just like so. Just like that. It's a little parcel. And I should be back. And there we have it. Your parcels, your holupche, as we call it, or golupche. So, basically cover this. You put a tiny, tiny bit of water in the bottom. It helps steam them and cook them nicely, yeah? I'm even going to put a couple of sprinkles of onions on top, yeah? You can fry them with onions. I'm going to put a couple on top for flavour as well, yeah? And just a little touch of pepper. Whatever it is. There it is. Sprinkle of pepper. Cover that with foil, Yeah? And then you're going to put that in the oven for about an hour and a half. An hour to an hour and a half on a low heat, yeah? Like so. And that will cook beautifully. You want the uh, you want the cabbage to get a bit crispy on top, so don't worry about that if it gets brown. Because that gives it extra flavour and that is how we cook it, yeah? So you're going to pop that in now into the oven. Yeah? Buzzing. And I'm back. So because you want your potatoes to cool down once they've boiled for the pedoga, do them before you do the pastry. It makes more sense because the heat and everything in the kitchen, the pastry will melt very quickly. So with this, you've got your potatoes. I'm going to add to this some butter, like you would normal creamy mash. No different. Nice lump of butter. There we go. Perfect. Right, and to that, bit of pepper, tiny bit of pepper. Not a lot, just enough to season, yeah? And a dash of milk. Just a little bit, not too much, because you don't want it too sloppy, yeah? You want the mash to be perfect. Right, so there's that. And now I am going to chop some cheddar cheese. You don't have to have cheese, and you can have mushrooms, you can have onions, you can do whatever you want. They even do them as a sweet version as well. You can buy it frozen, but I wanted to show you just how to make it homemade. Because that is how I do it. And I love Ukrainian food. It is one of my favourite things. So I am very finely chopping, because I don't want to grate it, some um, cheddar cheese, like I say, mild cheddar cheese. You can try it with mo mozzarella. You can try whatever cheeses you like, yeah, in your mash. You can, try what, you can try whatever fillings. It's amazing, yeah? So many people have asked me to show you how to make Ukrainian food. So here it is. Yep. There we go. And all you're going to do with this now is obviously mash, yeah? So once you've mashed it, I'll be back. And I'm back. So right, now I'm going to show you how to make the pierogi. The base of the pierogi, really. Well, it's not base. It's almost a pastry. So basically, this is what pierogi is. Like a boiled, boiled potato parcel kind of thing, yeah? A bit like pasta kind of thing, but a bit more stodgier. So basically, all you're going to start off with is the flour. Now, I do it by memory. So I'm going to put that much flour in. Two eggs. It's really simple guys, really, really simple and it's very cheap, but it's also an extremely filling meal. This is why it's a par it's a pauper food basically. You know, this is what we were told, but to us it's not, it's not pauper at all, it's 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 childhood, it's what we love. I do have Ukrainian friends, Eastern European friends, Russian, um Polish, all over the world. Yeah. All you're gonna do is mix all this together just like so and it doesn't look very nice to start off with and what you're going to do now is you're going to you're going to literally sprinkle the flour 
on your worktop. It is a messy meal, this, yeah? This is a messy one. Like so. Mix all this together. This is all 100% handmade and homemade, is this, yeah? And this is what you call cooking with love. This is what I love. It reminds me of being stood. It's almost like feeling like being stood next to my grandma and my granddad. It takes me back to being a little boy where they used to have a little kitchen and they used to fold out this table and for hours they'd get up at four or five in the morning and they would have free sittings of family and we'd all go and we'd all eat. But I used to go and I used to love to be there and I used to help them cook. And this is how I learned something that is so close to my heart. So basically you've got your pastry. This is my roots and this is why I will never ever get rid of my surname because it's something that I'm absolutely beyond proud of. You know, they really, really, really worked hard. They came here during the war when Hitler was around. You know, my granddad told me some right stories that he was in a concentration camp and that he suffered and it was horrible to listen to. And from then they had, a, they had two beautiful children, which he had one sister, well he has one sister, does my granddad, um, Evan. Um, which she had kids herself and he had my mum and then he had Christian which is her brother and he went on to have Emma and Kirsty which are my aunties and basically that's it and we've always grown up I mean even our Emma's kids my auntie's kids have even gone to Ukrainian school to learn the dancing the singing and stuff it's something that's always been very very true love in our in our family you know there's only one Washnik family we do have a couple of members maybe still left in Ukraine, in Kiev, because that's where we're from. Um, but I obviously am not in contact with them. I am not fully fluent on speaking, but I have at least took something away from it, which is my cooking. Which is, I think that's where I get my cooking love for cooking as well, with everything. But that is that. So basically, you're going you're gonna to need this, yeah? Make sure there's flour on it, make sure it's not sticking to worktops. And I will be back in a second. And I'm back, so you've kneaded that. I've cut two pieces, and I'm gonna do it exactly the same as how it was done when we were kids, with a nice glass, or cup, or whatever you can find. But this can work as two things, a rolling pin, and also what cuts the pastry arm. Now this is a very, 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 very filling meal. Very filling, yeah? So, that's why they like it over in Ukraine, because it's cheap. And it's very easy to make. And there you go. And keep doing the same process. And all you're going to do is you're going to cut your circles out. Make sure there's flour on the side so they don't stick. And just keep doing the same process. Like so. Like that. And as you can see. And I shall be back. And I'm back. So basically, you've seen the process. Yep. So there's your pastries. So basically, what I'm going to show you now how to move on to the next level. Right, so get a spoon. You've cooled down your mash already. What you want to do is you want to get a you want to get a spoonful, yeah. And all you're going to do with this is you're going to go like that, just round like that. Stretch the outsides of the pastry, which might add. I'm going to recap, which is basically your flour, your full fat milk, and two eggs. Yes, there you go. Right, so all I've done is I've moved that around, made it a bit bigger, like so. Potato. Pop that in on one side of it, and all you're going to do is flip that over, just like so, and you're going to go that out with your fingers all the way around, yeah? Just like so. It is dead easy. Don't worry if any potato comes out, you can either push it back in, or you can just scrape it off. And what you'll get is like a moon-shaped pierogi, yeah? Just like so, and it seals it. What you're going to do with these, and the beauty of these are very easy to understand how to cook because you're going to pop them into boiling hot water and once they are ready, they float guys. So you know when they're ready, yeah? And what you can do is you can fry them up into a frying pan with some onions or you can boil them and serve them with some plenty of butter, mix it up in a bowl and add your fried onions, you can have chives, you can have anything on top, yeah? I have sour cream. I'm very plain. Plain Jane. That's how I like it. And so there you go, that's that sealed. And it's the same process all the way around, so I'll come back in a minute. And I'm back. So while your bosh, your chicken bosh, is bubbling away, looking gorgeous, and your holochet is in the oven, smelling absolutely pain, I'm going to show you the next stage. So basically, you want to get 
big pan of water, boil your kettle, make sure it's nice and bubbling hot, and you're going to boil that up, yeah, to the heat that you want it, yeah? While I'm doing that, I've got a frying pan full of oil, it's getting up to heat now, yeah? I've left my Pratsky mix, which is a potato, grated potato, with one egg, salt and pepper, and a touch of the flour. Plain flour or pierogi flour, it doesn't matter, yeah? You know, bomb that together and that's how that should look, but you should leave that for a while before you serve it, yeah? Just spill a little bit then, that'll cover. So there you go. Right, and you want to put that up to a good heat. And all you're going to do with this is you're going to... It's like almost like drain the watery side of it off. Just potato cakes like that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pop them into your frying pan. Almost like a circle shape, yeah? I'll show you in one second. Right. And this is Pratsky. This is what we call potato cake Pratskis, yeah? And you want a couple of these. It is a very, very filling meal, all of this. Like I say, it's very cheap to make. I want to. I want you to see just how different you know cuisines can be. I mean, next week I'm going to be doing an Italian one, which will be calzone, which will be made from absolute scratch. Which you can't beat a calzone. I'll probably do a chicken Kiev calzone, and maybe another one as well. Two types. So, I'll have two of these each. I don't want to see my next because it's a lot of food. So there you go. So I'll show you now. So while your beetroot soup is bubbling away, you've got your Pratsky potato, potato cakes. Give them a minute on each side, yeah? Until it crisps on the bottom and then flip them over. Bit like a pancake, yeah? Back soon. And I'm back. So basically, recap. Still got that bubbling away. Your water is now up to the heat. That is your Pratsky, your potato cakes, yeah? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop you here. Right, so I'm gonna show you, all you do is you dink dink, you dunk your pierogi into the hot water, like so. Very simple, very easy guys, yeah? Try not to get your pierogies to stick, so you put flour on them, so they don't stick to anything. Any surface you leave them on or anything like that, very simple. It's a pastry, with the heat of the kitchen, can get very, very easily stringy and break and make holes into the pierogi. I like it out of now the little shit. So there we go. And there we go. And that is simple. You want to boil them till they float. The Pratsky is nicely crisp in the way. Your Bosch is on. The hollow cheese ready nearly. Boom. And I'm back. So basically I have served out the Pratsky, which is there. That will be topped with tomato ketchup because that is the key for that flavour. That's how we eat it. You can have it with other things like sour cream, whatever. We have it with, we do have it with um, butter. So, uh, and we have it with ketchup and we have sour cream. That's how we've always had it. Or cottage cheese because some people don't like sour cream. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, while the pinogia is cooking and the Bosch still, I'm going to get out, oh God, fuck me, that's hot. I'm going to get out my holiday chip. I'll gollop you people gollop, which is there. And I'm going to simply serve that onto the plates and I shall be back in a second. And I'm back. So I've put my Bosch into the bowl. I've served out the hollow chair and the Pratsky, which is next to it, on the plate. I'm now going to do the pierogi, but I'm going to show you what you do with the pierogi, yeah? So, as you can see, like I say, when the pierogi is ready, it will float, like so. So what you do with this now is you take that out, like so. Oh, God, that's a bit hot. Pop it into your bowl, Pyrex, don't matter what it is, even if it's a pan, whatever, drain the water, whatever you want to do. I do it like this. You don't want to do it like that, you want to do it like this. So you go like that. You've popped that into your big bowl, just like so, yeah? What you're going to do with this now is you're going to drain off any excess water. That'll be a start. Alright, and just with this, you are going to put a good, good, good helping of butter in, yeah? Like I said, this is a very cheap meal and it's a very tasty meal, yeah? Good glug of butter. And all you're going to do is give this a shake. And that butter will work in with all of this. 
and it is a key factor to it, yeah, because it'll be very dry and very bland. It gives it the saltiness, it gives it the tastiness, it gives it the naughtiness. Just like so, yeah? And there you go. You can serve them onto the plate and I'll be back in a second. And there we have it, guys. So I'm going to show you just how the plate should look. There's your hollop chip, which is corned beef, rice, onion and garlic. Mixed together, put in a um, boiled cabbage leaf, wrapped and cooked in the oven for about an hour and a half. Then you have your pierogi, which is your Ukrainian or Polish flour, which is mixed with two eggs, milk, salt and pepper, if you want, um, and mix that together as a pastry. Stuff that with your potato, I've used cheese, you can use mushrooms, onions, anything, garlic, whatever, you can get creative, crispy bacon, whatever. So many different ways, you can even do it as a sweet alternative. Your potato pratsky, which is potato, one egg, bit of flour, mix it, salt and pepper. Your bosht, which is a bosht concentrated um, liquid, or you can get the powdered, um, which is a concentrated like um, powder, which you can make out of the soup. You grate your beetroot, mix that all together, salt and pepper once again. More pepper, because it gives it that little bit of a kick, yeah? Cook your chicken either in the oven, grill, fry, or lean machine like I do, get rid of the fat and it's more healthier. Um, mix it all together, boil that for a couple of hours, it's even better the next day. You can serve that with crusty bread as a serving suggestion. You can buy a bread which is from Ukrainian shops, it's in European, it's called rye bread. You can make it yourself, it's absolutely gorgeous guys, it goes really, really nice and it actually lasts longer, does the bread a lot longer because of the rye. So, serving suggestions with this, this is how we have it. With your um, pierogi, you want to get some soured cream. You pick that up. Top that on, just like so, all over your pierogi. Yep, there we go. And basically with your hollop chair, we serve it with tomato ketchup and same with the pratsky. Give it a little blob, just like so. Just like so. Little, little tiny dusting of parsley onto your pierogi. You can have chives, just like so. You can do whatever, you can have fried onions and we use parsley today because I like fancy it. And there is your finishing product guys, yes? Very good. Thank you for watching. Tune in again for another video. Next week I'll be doing Italian. Today I've showed you World, it's World International Pierogi Day. So there you go. My Ukrainian roots. All I have to say now is thank you for watching as Nastrovia, which is cheers. And tune in again very soon. Hashtag come cook with me, easy tasting meals. Hashtag cooking on a budget. Hashtag Reem food. Thank you for watching.